Warning, this show contains strong language and topics that some viewers may find offensive. Listen, discretion is advised. Hello, Why have you been going down on your grandma? I thought Layla died. Yeah, right, we've lost. My name is Coach. The guy looks like a pedophile. It's Blue. Willow. Woo! Ah, okay. He played keep away with his glasses. Literally driving his mad. Bleh. Another edition of Super. I don't know why I do that. I am Andy Quan, and with me as always is Liam Dunn. Andy, literally sometimes, right? I I genuinely wonder what goes through your fucking head. <laughs> well, I wanted to do the. Album. What were you do- Were you impersonating Ricardo Rodriguez? What the hell, yes, bro? I was. But why would you impersonate Ricardo Rodriguez? Ricardo Rodriguez is awesome. He's no, he's not. Yes. He's not. Yes. He's not. They made him go on Raw with a Justin Bieber T-shirt on. But he's awesome. I, I, uh, uh, this just in, Andy Korn is a Justin Bieber fan, apparently. Oh, I'm not! I just... It was funny! Fucking aura. I mean, that's one hell to start the show. And also, and also, we have Sam Brooks. Hey, how sorry, you? look, I'm oh, sorry, God Sam. God damn it, you cut me off again. What is wrong with you? I'm sorry, but he's just revealed he's a Justin Bieber fan. I'm not! I thought it was funny because he Justin Bieber sucks. Make up I your mind. Even, I can't even comprehend what you're saying right now. Just make mate. up your mind. Are you a Justin Bieber fan or are you not? No, I'm not. Do you believe? Then you don't like Ricardo Rodriguez. End of. There we go. Let's move on with life. Oh, oh, boom. So let's move on with item? life. What is the first news item? The first, the first. Speaking news of news items, that we are. <laughs> I'm reminding everyone that we are on iTunes. We are on Facebook. We are on Twitter, and we are on. Supla.com. Hey. Hey. I got it right again. Second week in a row. Who know? Week. Um. So yeah, we will move on because we have news on Sting's WWE de- debut. Because there's more news that's come out. Uh. So meanwhile, despite being teased on WWE.com, Sting did not appear on Raw, as we know from the Raw review. It's believed his appearance at Survivor Series was a last-minute decision and that Randy Orton was actually poised for some kind of interference in the main event itself. The reason why Sting wasn't on Raw may be because they haven't worked out where they're taking the storyline. The Undertaker was always the first name in consideration for a WrestleMania match with the WCW legend, though The Undertaker's own status is obviously in doubt, and the obvious match would be Triple H vs Sting, but some website called PWInsider.com say that this has not been discussed internally yet. And at the ending of the pay-per-view was a great moment, and they need to follow up in a big way, and this will ultimately end in a Hall of Fame induction. Hopefully oh. not death as well, like last year. Oh, God. No, don't. don't no oh, one died. No, look at Sam stealing someone's gimmick. Jesus. What, the gimmick of pointing out that people die because WWE pushes them too hard when they're old? Okay, Ultimate Warrior wasn't pushed hard. Unless you say pushing hard is get in the ring and talk. Do you not understand how much travelling he went through in the prior days up to WrestleMania? Oh, I'm so- yeah, it's fucking difficult getting in an aeroplane, isn't it? Gee- oh, geez, Louise, oh my god. You don't understand. So, I'm happy Sting's here, but at the same time, I'm not happy with the fact that they don't know what the hell they're doing. Yeah, I'm not happy with this at all. I... As much as it was nice to see Sting in a WWE ring, they could have done it without him interfering in the match. And the fact that Sting's apparently been offered a contract where it's similar to Bork Laser, where literally, like like, like the Icon Stang and Bork Laser... Icon Stang. Cut Angel, a genetically stacked... <laughs> uh, so basically... Oh, yeah. Hang on, I just want to say, if things come with the TNA narrator, I will, I will mark out. Yeah, but I just want the TNA narrator to just narrate his entire that, entrance. That guy, right... <laughs> Fucking that guy <laughs> couldn't get anyone's name right. <laughs> it was like, cut angel. <laughs> it took like, less than five minutes to derail the fucking conversation. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Morgan, the genetically stuck, genetically packed, like Samoa Joe. 
So Stang, right? Stang. <laughs> Andy, you seem very unhappy with the way the Survivor Series played out, citing the fact that it overshadowed Dolph Ziggler's performance. Do you still stand by that? Eh, kind of, yeah. I, I kind of still feel that way because inevitably what the record books will always show is that Dolph Ziggler couldn't do it on his own. And yes, there was interference. Yes, and all that shit. But, Guy, you're clearly forgetting the fact that prior to Sting showing up, he almost had Seth Rollins... He had Seth Rollins pinned. There was just no referee. And he eliminated Kane and Luke Harper before that by himself. So really... Which is a pretty incredible feat, yeah, to be fair. really. That's something John Cena would do. And it's the fact that Dolph Ziggler has proved himself... And sure, Sting did show up, and that's something that no one will ever forget. But the record books will show that Dolph Ziggler was the sole survivor of Team Cena, which is something I never thought would happen. I didn't. I was very shocked when I saw that. I mean, uh, don't get me. Don't get me wrong. It's great that Ziggler's getting this push. It's fucking fantastic. But like, if you if you gonna involve Sting, why wasn't he on Raw? Why was he involved in this story? Why like they only brought him up? He was like. The hunter's like, fucking Sting! Like, that was basically it. And it's like, um... You gonna bring Sting out, or... Well, here's the thing. Just... Survivor Series is currently free on the network in America, nowhere else, because you can't get it here, for fuck's sake. But, uh, <laughs> the fact that no. Sting showed up was purely to draw in the numbers. And from what I've read, that's kind of what they're doing with his character. They're bringing him for the big moments so that they'll draw publicity, subscribers for the network... All that kind of thing. And I'm not happy with that, but at the same time, he's old. It's Sting. He's not even in his... His prime was like 20 years ago. You can't really yeah. do much with him in the ring. Even if you wanted to, he can't do it himself. So, I don't know. I personally saw like Survivor Series ending that exact way, but Sting wasn't necessarily in the picture. I thought it would have been Randy Orton, as previously stated. I thought it might would have been Roman that would have Reigns. Made more sense. I thought it would have been Roman Reigns even because he's advertised to appear in December. Oh, this is why it pisses me off because Orton would have made sense. They're in St. Louis, Louis, whatever. They were there. They're in the fucking town. He could have just RKO'd out of nowhere. He was backstage as well. Let's not forget. Why the, the thing fuck is the other thing to be fair. Sting? To be fair with what Andy said, like they did not strike while the iron was hot with this Randy Orton RKO thing. And it's I'm perfect. sorry. They, WWE, and we were talking about this, I think, on an episode of Bite Size a couple of weeks ago, and we were talking about how WWE, this is something that doesn't really happen with them. Something's gone viral. They dropped the ball with the whole fandangoing. Heck, they even dropped the ball with Zack Ryder, which wasn't even really a viral thing, right? Yeah. RKO's from, RKO from out of nowhere went massive. I know everyone who, who watched that. It's dead now. Nobody ever mentions those videos. And... What did WWE do? They kept they kept uh, Orton off TV. To be fair, even if they brought him back at Survivor Series, they could have just salvaged to it. To be but fair, no. but the reason why he was off TV is purely due to poor time management. He went off to film a movie. I don't know what movie it was, but it's going to be shit anyway because it's a WWE Studios movie. It's not the Condemned. The Condemned Two. There you fucking go. The first one was okay. But would it have killed them to just get him in for one Raw? And it would have made it would have, it would have made sense for the storyline because they beat the shit out of him, and then it would make sense for him to come back and RK out of nowhere and be like Randy Orton, where the fuck are you? And like haha, lol, fuck off. Like that would have been fine. Not I am staying. I am old. Like I've seen the pictures of him. Like the the Titan Tron looks awesome. The music's a bit shit, but whatever. And then Sting, as he comes out, looks so old. Yeah, they couldn't because have... he is. They couldn't, have died oh. his hair. they couldn't have given him, I don't know, sideburns because he looks weird without them. He just, he just but looks, he looks depressed. To play devil's advocate here a little bit. To play devil's advocate, if you have the choice between bringing in Randy Orton and Sting in the surprise main event of a WWE event, who would you pick? Randy Orton. From a publicity standpoint though because randy orton RKO, returning would have made sense in I'd still pick orton the whole rko from out of nowhere vines is still more in more um over right now even though it's pretty much dead it still remembers 
anyone outside of wrestling doesn't know who Sting is. If you said, oh, Sting debuted in WWE, they'd be like, oh, no, they what, the know, drummer they're... from fucking Police? No, I think they would remember who Sting was from WCW, but they were like, wait, he still does the wrestling thing? Is it he like 900? And the answer is yes. <laughs> well, you have a good point. But at the same time, I can understand why they brought in Sting. But what I don't understand is why it was a last minute decision and why they have no idea about where the future of the storyline is going other than a Hall of Fame induction. Same clusterfuck with Brock Lesnar. You know what, right? This is what I was going to say because this is my two cents. Thanks for asking, guys. This is my two cents on the whole thing, right? All I have to say is... Barry. Another fucking part-timer. We have (laughs) another part-timer. And I I can see this. I, I can see the storyline going towards WrestleMania 31 in that because The Rock's too busy to go with their storyline of facing Triple H, because that's clearly what they were going to go for. That's what they wanted originally, but yeah. obviously The Rock's just like, ha, no. Ain't that funny, Liam? The Rock versus right? Triple H? Ain't that funny? Well, this is even funnier. It's going to be Sting versus Triple H. Well, the website says that least, they're not... At least The Rock it. is universally known. At least the rock is in shape. Yeah, <laughs> right. He won't be a part timer. He's in shape. I, uh, it just angers me. Like speaking of part timers, because we might as well talk about this man if we're going to be talking about this as well. Brock Lesnar, Brock Lesnar, the whatever, is interested in fighting again during a press conference the, uh, that the UFC had, which they announced literally nothing because they're like hashtag the time is now, and literally in this press conference. They didn't announce anything. Literally, Dana White was like, howdy, hey, hey. Uh, whatever we were about to announce today, we don't have that sorted yet. Yep, pointless being here, guys. Whatever. Uh, so, also in this press conference, Dana White said that Bro- Brock Laser is interested in fighting uh, MMA again. And the way that he suggested it, uh, they may try and work uh, something out where he can fight and wrestle at the same time. Which Does that make sense? And these are Dana White's exact words. Brock Lesnar's under contract with WWE. We have a great relationship with him. He's healthy, and he said he, that he's interested in fighting again. We'll see what happens. Technically, Lesnar is under an exclusive contract with WWE until WrestleMania 31. So this could be factored into the next deal. So basically, it's UFC versus WWE and possibly Bellator. Because Bellator are owned by Viacom, and everyone's like, if he goes to Bellator, Bellator will be huge, which is true. So, your current reigning and defending WWE champion doesn't want to wrestle anymore. I'm done with this shit. I've had enough. I I can't deal with this no more. I've had enough. Well, it's funny you say that, right? I personally think this is a better idea, purely because of the exposure and the bridge that they would build between UFC and the WWE. Because (laughs) UFC, let's face it, is the highest rising form of sport right now. Well, yeah, but I. But the weird thing is, Dana has always said as well that we're not like that WWE, we're real. And, like, I can't ever imagine it happening. I can't imagine Vince and Dana being on the same page. I can't ima- I cannot imagine that ever happening. Like, there's no, no way. It's like the wrestling version of Who Framed Roger Rabbit. You would have him go out to UFC as a real person, but he would have, like, a cartoon belt as, like, the WWE World Heavyweight Championship. (laughs) Because that's maybe what wrestling is compared to fucking UFC. It's a cartoon. I can't imagine it. I can't see it. Like, I don't think Vince would want to risk the health of somebody else. Like, imagine if Brock Lesnar got fucking his arm broken, or his leg broken, or he's out with a concussion for, like, 12 months. What the fuck do you do then? So you're paying for a guy that you can't even... I mean, I, it's worse than it is now. Like, you've said to Brock, Dad, just turn up four times a year, mate. It's all good. Now it's like, oh, you can't turn up four times a year? You can only turn up, like, once? Oh, fuck. So I can't, I can't imagine that happening. That, that would be even worse, I would, I would suggest. I, if anything, if Brock has the itch to fight again... And UFC are more than willing to pay. Brock Lesnar coming back, like Ariel, Ariel Hawani was like, he could get more than a million buys on pay-per-view. And the last time Brock was there, he fucking 
like got millions of fucking people watching him on free TV and millions of buys. And right now they have no fucking draws. Like the only people they have that are worth fucking shit in the UFC right now are Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey, John Jones, and that is it. They don't have GSP anymore. Anderson Silva is fucking like I don't know if he's going to be any good because he fucked up his leg. Uh, you don't have, like, a Randy Couture-level guy. You don't have a heavyweight guy that's, like, at that level, I'm afraid. And all the lighter weights are just kind of a bit crap. So, I mean, they're, like, in terms of... Not in terms of their actual fighting, because the fights are impressive and exciting, but no one wants to watch them. So they need Brock. And I think it's best if Brock Lesnar fucks off. And yeah. I, th- I think it, it would benefit WWE in the long run as well because I, I completely disagree with what Jim Ross said about the whole thing about Brock Lesnar being champion is good because then, you know, the title's not being defended every month. It's back to the old NWO... Uh, and I was going to say NWO days, but that's fucking weird. No. Yeah, NWA the good days. Old days. The good it's old the days. same guy that's like... Is, no, no, hang on. I'm not finished. Yes, like, I... The thing is, though, is that the 70s is very different to the 2010s. It's a different world, right? It's... People aren't as patient anymore, Jim. Okay? You can't have... I, in my opinion, you can't have a champion who shows up four times a year. Is, when is everyone else is there every single week, twice a week, three times a week. You can't do that. And the only, the only way... The only way it worked in the old days was because people still believed... That it was partly real. Like with UFC, if these fuckers get hurt, they get hurt and they have to go away for three, six, nine, twelve months at a time. It's ridiculous. You, This is the same idiot that's like, oh, hey, the Ring of Honor guys need to slow it down. And like, stop doing closed fists. It, it hurts the business. Like, shut up, Jim. <laughs> I don't. I, go do. Stop doing blogs. Just stop. Just stop fucking writing. You piss me off every time. Do- like, every time he writes something, I, I hate him more. And it fucking annoys me, because the guy used to be so good as a commentator, and he's doing the fucking New Japan thing. I, I kind of hate him, and I'm going to hate him when he talks, when he does this thing. Stop it! I like to think that his uh, blogging will have no effect on his ability to call matches, but no, at the same time... No, but it's time, my perception at... of him, that's the problem. I know, like, I know. At the same time, him. I can totally understand why people are turning on Jim Ross, because he's just... Not saying very smart things right now, and it's something that you can't really afford to do when you're in this kind of like modern wrestling environment. If that makes sense. Yeah. The I... problem with Jim Ross, like I said, he's stuck in the seventies. He wants it to be the good old days, but the good old days would not work in today's world, in my personal opinion. They definitely wouldn't. In a world where we live in instant gratification, right? People want everything immediately, and they want it fast. In a world where we live with that prevalent, you can't have the world heavyweight championship of your company not appear on TV and not be defended. I thought it was fine way back when it happened, but over time I can kind of see why this was a bad idea. Yeah. Well, I thought when they were going to give him the belt, I thought this means that Brock might be more willing to show up. Even if he just wrestled pay-per-views, I could let it slide. I could be like, fine. Exactly. Even then that would be a pay-per-view draw because you'd be like, the only time you ever get to see Brock Lesnar was on fucking pay-per-view or by the fucking network because this is the only way you're ever going to see him. But, no. He, he's, he did what? SummerSlam, which was August, and then what was the next one? Night of Champions? Night of Champions, September. which was, I might add, shit. We have not seen Brock Lesnar in two months. Not at all. And this We've seen is... Paul Heyman, but he's only been on the fucking pre-show. It's the that's the only is. decent thing about this whole thing, is that Paul Heyman came back. But Literally, the thing is, the only good he, thing. Was with, he was with CM Punk. They didn't need Brock Lesnar to bring Paul Heyman back. No, bro, no originally, Paul came back because Brock came back. Yeah, and then they originally. kind of linked them together. And then when Brock left, he went with Punk. Yeah. Brock came back, went back to Brock. Brock left again. He went to Cesaro. God rest his fucking career. Are you sure you didn't go to Axel? Fuck Rybaxel, okay? That never happened. Okay. 
And then Cesaro got fucked over when Brock came back again, and Paul was like, "Sorry, I have to go back to my home planet now. Bye." This is oh, the hey, 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 guys! I have a, I have an idea, right? This is a bit kooky, a bit weird, right? A little out of the box, yeah. but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah what's that? Why not put Paul Heyman with a new guy? Because God forbid that they actually push somebody new. Genius, brilliant idea. Like, I don't know, Cesaro, who is on a massive losing streak right now. I'm they, thinking, right, I'm, if Paul no, Heyman Paul never Heyman left Cesaro. For a month does not count. I mean, let's give put Paul Heyman with someone like the way they put him with Brock Lesnar. Who's in NXT? Oh, who do you want? Okay, um, Baron Corbin. All right, that guy, fuck it. Baron Corbin, now essentially, for those who don't be... know, he is very, very... T- think... American badass Undertaker, but he doesn't say anything, and he has a lone wolf gimmick. Perfect, that'll do. There you go. Paul Heyman can talk to him. That's a, that's basically what they did to Brock. They brought him in from OVW, and they stuck Paul Heyman with him, and then Brock became the fucking greatest thing ever, and he beat The Rock by SummerSlam. And this is a fact, right? Baron Corbin's matches last no longer than 30 seconds. Perfect. Right? Absolutely His perfect. longest match, I think, was, I think, uh, less than 30 seconds. And What's if you bring... Move? His finishing move is the end of days. It's a what thing where, that? basically, imagine the opponent runs into you. He picks them up and throws them backwards onto their face. It's Perfect. a very effective finishing move. And other than, like, other they, than a they, kick in the face, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. They do need that's to it. change his finisher name, though, because that's a bit crap. Like, the F5, that sounds menacing. The, the end of days. I what, don't the know, end of days? Seems... The end of, how the is name, that not menacing? The end of days. How about knock the fuck out? There you go, knock the fuck out. KFO, brilliant. This is why I need to run a fucking wrestling company one day, because I'm going to have a guy that's going to fucking just have a move, it's going to be called Knock the Fuck Out, and it's the just going to be a is kick. Though, is that when I hear End of Days, I hear Wade Barrett's theme. I had a nap. When yeah. I hear End of Days, I think it's fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger movie, so whatever. But the yeah. point is, we're getting too hung up over it. Cut! The point is, right, if you bring up someone from NXT, like Baron Corbin, who hasn't said a, basically hasn't said a word, since his debut, but he dominates every match he's ever been in. Do that. Bring up Baron Corbin with Paul Heyman as a mouthpiece, and that would give him a foot in the door, like it did with Lesnar, like it did with Punk, like it did with pretty much anyone who's been under Paul Heyman's wing. Okay? Just do that, and it'll be fine. keep Heyman with him. Don't and do keep with Sarah, him with which him. is just sort of quietly move Heyman away, because, oh, we've got Brock Lesnar back. <laughs> <laughs> actually keep Heyman with him. Well, if we want to do this thing where he exclusively goes to UFC, we won't have that problem, provided Paul Heyman has to stay with the company. But I don't know if Paul Heyman would want to stay with the company. That's, Why not? He has, to, he has so much potential there to help the younger talent, which he likes doing, I assume. Otherwise, why would he work with all of them? Mm, but either way, we're so. getting slightly off topic. Basically, yeah, yeah. Lesnar going to UFC exclusively, I would be fine with. I just like seeing Lesnar yeah, kill I, people. If it happens great because bork is the worst thing on earth no he's not come Ugh. on he's entertaining when he's there so, i can't hear anything what oh i accidentally muted you guys <laughs> brilliant so yes. moving on i guess yep so even though we've just complained about sting uh thanks to the fallout from survivor series mostly because of the anticipation for sting this week's Raw drew a big viewership spike and not the fucking TV network. The show drew 4,249,000 viewers, which is way up from the previous week's uh, 3 million number. And this is also the biggest number since June. Oh, okay, look, I've got to be honest. I'm very confused by American ratings. Is that good? Is 4 million good? That's pretty good, because that's 4 million is a big amount of people. Yeah, but doesn't America have, like, 100 million people? I'm not sure, but I don't know. I read this the other day. They have like 300 million. That's something we'd have to ask either Carmine or Glenn about. But at the same time, speaking as someone who reviews Raw every single week, this week's Raw was one of the best I've seen in a while. And think about what happened in June. John Cena was the WWE champion, and Seth Rollins just won money in the bank. So to put it back to that time, and that was your highest number, you think... Hmm, so you can kind of see why they brought in Sting. Even though he didn't bloody show up on Raw, the numbers don't lie. People are interested and they like to tune in to see what happens next at this point. Odds are happy, they'll I'm... drop the ball, but at the same time, fuck it. Raw as long as he doesn't wrestle, I, I guess that's not so bad, but like... 
Well, people have been saying they want to bring him in as the general manager, which I think maybe, oh, maybe. I, I would be happy if he just doesn't talk. Like, Rich is in WCW's thing, for like, when he turned into the He didn't talk for, like, a whole year. A whole year, he just came out and beat people up, and then he started talking. That would be... Perfect! Do that! Ta-da! All I can say is, at least the one good thing that they've done so far is they did not bring in Joke Sting. Oh, God, why would they even do that? I'm pretty sure that Joker Sting, a.k.a. the Shit Sting, is still property of TNA, what little they have left. So, I'm, I'm happy it's the Crow, I gotta say. But the theme song... I don't know. They could have picked the original one. They own it, don't they? I think so. They own WCW, I'd say they so would. they own all of WCW's themes. Why not just give them that? It's most recognisable, and it's really good. Yeah, why did they make a new theme for him? I don't think the theme is bad, I just don't... Because CO for... Dollar FX shit guys wanted to get their own twist on it. Well, it could even be him. Oh, there's not enough dubstep I... in this, guys! Is we gonna have there's no dubstep in this song, you idiot. Yeah, really. What? It could be Kafas, it could be Jim Johnson, who knows, he composes themes every now and then, but at the same time, uh, whatever. The Titan Tron is cool. Yeah, uh, fuck it. Well, I've got some better news, because Way Barrett has some good news. Uh, it was reported back in 2010 that Bad News Barrett and Juru McIntyre were kept away working from WWE due to issues with their work visas back home. Uh, Barrett has uh, apparently not had any visa issues since and uh, since then, but now he definitely doesn't have to worry about them in the future because Barrett has indicated on Twitter that he now has a green card in the United States, meaning that he's now a lawful permanent resident of the United States of America. As way back we are following today, hey, at Barack Obama, thanks to the green card, you're the man. Hallelujah. This so is basically, a great thing. We, we now no longer have to cheer Bad news, Barrett, because he's now an American citizen. Boo! Well, think about when Bad News Barrett, or Wade Barrett, debuted back in whenever, like, 2010. His main event push, I'm pretty sure, was derailed because he had issues with his fucking work visa. But now he doesn't have that issue anymore. He could potentially be in the main event within the next two years, which I'm excited for because I actually like Bad News Barrett. I like Bad News Barrett. He's entertaining, that's the important thing. I'd rather just be called Wade. No, I like the Bad News thing. It sets Actually, him, a, it is sets a him apart. It sets him apart from the generic mid-card, which I've said time and time again, is just wrestlers who have not that much of a gimmick, but they can wrestle good. Which isn't good if you want to be in the main event, because to be in the main event, you need a solid gimmick. Can we just agree he can never do Wasteland again? Well, uh, sure. I don't, I'm not even sure what his finishing move is now. But it's just that airbag, like isn't it? A, a what? That he fucking... fucking set that up on purpose. An airbow. Oh. He set that up on purpose. An Fuck airbow. You, you fucking asshole! I can say airbow. Airbow. I know you can say airbow, but can you say elbow? Elbow. El- fuck. No. <laughs> Sam, Sam, just don't, don't even bite the bait. Don't even bite it. Elbow. I will swallow the hook, my friend. I just fucking said it. Elbow. There you go. What stopped you before? The airbow. Brilliant. Okay, so Banners Barrett's good. It's good that he's now a permanent resident because he can't be fucked over by government. So, yay. Um, I've got to be honest. I Barrett's never really been on my radar. Despite the fact that you can do a perfect impression. Well, apparently I can. You people used to think I sounded like Wade Barrett on YouTube. Yeah. So. Uh... Say, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. No, it wasn't that. What was it? What was the thing that I used to say? You're either Nexus or you're against this. No, it wasn't even that. I think Hello. those are his two catchphrases. What? What did I he think say? I no. There what was some. Say? I'm sure there was something else. Hello, is that what you used to say? I can't even remember. I don't think I, no, Wade I don't Barrett. Think it was a... I don't think Wade How Barrett long has, has ever been. Barrett that? been around for? He's been Barrett. around since I believe over a year. He debuted online, I think, last year with the JBL Not Cold show. I think around June 2013. I'm okay, it could have been, I'm afraid I've got some bad news. I'll look it up, because I want to know. But, yeah, I'm glad that Bad News Barrett is now a mainstay, and he can't be messed over, because when he was in Continental Champion, he was over as shit. And it was amazing. So, if they can capitalize on this, and put him in a spot where he's getting recognition, because he can wrestle. He's a very good technician and everything, so... Sorry, gents, I've just got some breaking news. I'll have you now. I've just got some breaking news. Thanks to WWE Supercard constantly bugging me, 
I have now been told that WWE Supercard has released an update featuring the new Survivor Card rarity, in case oh. anyone's interested. I'm interested. Do tell. Oh. We can talk about this for like five minutes. I don't well, care. I don't know. It's literally, I've just been told, so I can't... I, I, if somebody would like to maybe... Uh, let me open the app. I've just been told as well. To we could all do this together at the same Let's time. Let's all do a live review. Let's see what this piece review. of shit is. My phone Damn. is dead, so I'm going to have to sit out on this one, I'm afraid. So, Sam's just going to have to be quiet while me and Andy just wait well, for our phones to I've played enough Supercard to know what it is, so... You've, the thing is, you've had Supercard less than me, for a shorter amount of time than me, and yet you somehow I never have racked it. up, like, a billion wins and, like, two losses. I literally never That's played it That's not anymore. even true. If I had my phone now, I'll, I'll put it on charge and I'll see if I can get it up in time. Oh, see wait, I've got, to, I've got to download. I've got to fucking download. update it, for fuck's sake. Oh, Fuck this shit. Didn't do that automatically. Never mind, bollocks. Right, moving on. A oh. new day. The new day. New day. Whatever. It's a fuck new it. day. I said it's a new day. Well, they've debuted. After WWE planned to debut them next week on Raw, the A New Day stable. <laughs> what? The A <laughs> New Day Kingston, stable. Brilliant. Big E, Xavier Woods. Debuted at Tuesday SmackDown tapings in Fort Wayne, Indiana. They defeated Heath Slater, Curtis Axel, and Titus O'Neil in a six-man tag team match. The group celebrated around ringside and with the announcers after the match. Now this is great, right? For it's those a new day. People apparently. probably don't know much about like this group on the house show circuit. They've been known as the Smart Athletic Friends. Myself and Carmine are big fans of them, and basically. This gospel thing that they're doing isn't really what the Smart Athletic Friends were, but at the same time, I'm really, really glad that these guys are finally coming to TV because they work well together. Kofi Kingston is finally getting a career change, a uh, gimmick change, for the first time in his career. Like, let's think about that. He's had the same gimmick for since his debut, and now he's getting something different. Which Man, good. he's not really Jamaican. And he's not a... Well, he's not Jamaican, but he is stereotypical black requirement, which I don't think is going to set them back any, because if you've seen the vignettes, they're really entertaining. Just the I way they kind of, things. the way they kind of talk and the way they kind of use just the body language and everything, it's really, really entertaining. So I have high hopes for the New Day, even though the name is weird and stupid. Yeah. I just want them to come out with Devon and go, please call my name, please call my name, do, 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 do. and then Batista can come back. Oh. It's Deacon oh, Batista, oh, yes. Oh my it's god. Ruining it, no. Yes. Took you five oh seconds to ruin this. He's coming in. This is why hey, we need to put this stuff. If we could get Devon to come back as uh, Reverend Devon and oh just god, manage yes. these guys. Oh my god. The thing is, Devon's no. black, so he'll fit. Great. And? Black up Batista, he'll fit. Ooh. What? Do not black up Batista. Just no! Black. Do not. No, <laughs> That's no, 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 no. Mania. No, do not black up Batista, okay? <laughs> no, don't do that, Liam. Just black him up a little bit. He's no, no, right, moving on. Uh, so... Oh my god, can I just say one thing? If Batista ever comes back, can he come back as Drax the Destroyer? Why? Can he bring Groot with him? He would be so over if he was Drax. Bring the CGI creation with him. Great, great, Andy. Brilliant. I haven't seen that film yet. Neither have I. You guys suck. It's amazing. I am Groot. I'm waiting for it to come out on DVD so I can get it for Christmas. Groot. I think it's out on DVD now. It is. Groot. For Christmas. So. Is that all the fucking character says? Groot. No, he says I am Groot. Anyway, Nob. this isn't Guardians. This is wrestling news. Who broke his neck? Yoshi Tatsu, the former WWE star Yoshi Tatsu, which in by the way in New Japan Pro Wrestling to get around the copyright. Guess what his name is in New Japan. Yoshi Tatsu. Tatsu Yoshu? No, it literally is Yoshi Tatsu. It's all one word. It's one word. It makes sense in the Japanese language, so whatever. So, Yoshi Tatsu suffered a broken neck after taking a botched Styles clash from the phenomenal, <laughs> not really, AJ Styles <laughs> on November 8th. Um, this is the third major neck injury as a result of the Styles clash <laughs> just this fucking year. Well, many have argued that yes. people are taking the move are failing to put their head in the right position. Perhaps it's now on AJ to make sure that all of his opponents know how to take the move safely. So get ready to die. Da, 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 da. No, no, one, no one's died. No, fuck AJ no Styles died. to start, just right? The necks. Can we just They're agree? Different. Fuck AJ Styles at this point. Uh, He's gone I don't. From being one of the greatest to literally just don't fucking get in a ring with him. That and he hates gays, so you know. Does he hate gays? I'm pretty sure. 
Oh boy, I hate gears. So, basically, I'm sad. Because AJ Styles wants to put himself in every man. That's every what it is. Every man. Every man. He wants to put himself in every man. Because he by... thinks he's superior, so he wants to put himself in every man. And by further extension, he wants to help out the Boy Scouts. So he wants to put a bit of himself inside every boy. Moving on. So and... yes, no, 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 not moving I'm so on. Glad you're here. I'm so glad you're here, Sam. I know, right? It's funny we watch the same stuff. But anyway, <laughs> get it. I'm, I'm gutted with this. Because Yoshitatsu, right? He, in, in New Japan, there's a stable called the Bullet Club, which is basically their NWO, right? But good. And Yoshitatsu has taken on the gimmick of the Bullet Club Hunter, where he systematically tries to dismantle the Bullet Club. Obviously, it's not working too well, but... Well, yeah, not really. He's broken his fucking no. neck. And basically, he's a good athlete, and it's just a shame that AJ Styles has put another fucking guy in the hospital because of his finishing move. I don't know if it's him or, like... I don't know. Just stop doing the move. I know. It's it could... not even a good move. It's a shit-looking move anyway. What even is it? What even is it? What even is the Stars Clash? It's just falling face first. It's just it's falling. Pedigree. It's just a shit move. Great. Brilliant. So... Do, do the 450. Just keep doing things like that. Yeah. Whilst it's all unfair to put all the blame on Styles, at the same time, there's a pattern here. If you put three people in the hospital, you fucking... Duh. I mean, I, the first one was Lionheart, which was a guy who works in this country. The second guy was Roderick Strong. Oh, God. And uh, now it's Yoshitatsu. There's going to be mean... no one left in New Japan. You're just gonna, all going to have broken necks, and AJ Styles will be holding all 12 of their titles. The, the, I don't... I mean, the, his, I've seen the match, and the gimmick is actually really good. I've seen it for the first time. Where he points the gun and all this shit, like, with his fingers. Or he could be just saying, I want to finger something. But, you know, it's all good. It's it's a good gimmick. But that fuck, I've seen it. I've seen the botch. And it's it's hideous. It really is. I'm like... Oh, I've not seen it yet. What it's, happens? It's so grim. You have to go and watch it after this. I can't, I can't explain it. It's... Oof. it's he, Yoshi Tatsu basically lands on the top of his head. Yep. It's horrible. Oh, and the Jesus. problem the problem is... I don't know if it's, like, you would think it'd be common sense. I don't know. Is it, like, don't move your head. Don't look down at the mat. Don't just leave your fucking head there. Yeah, but accidents happen. I know. Just so, do a different move, for fuck's sake. It'd be easier. Instead of placing blame, let's wish Yoshitatsu a speedy yes, recovery so he can get back to being a badass. But, fuck, come up with a new move. Yeah. D- don't... It's more of a face move anyway, so just do the calf killer or the fuck you kept doing. Do something that doesn't break people's necks, you idiot. Or that could be his gimmick. The neck breaker, AJ oh, Styles. Break fucking neck, AJ Styles. Speaking of New Japan, our last news story for today is New Japan Pro Wrestling is on AXS TV. Uh, TV expands its Friday night lineup, acquiring New Japan Pro Wrestling series for 2015. It will be a 13 episode series that premieres on US television January 16th, 2015, 9pm Eastern, 6pm Pacific, leading into the weekly live AXTV fights broadcast. Josh Barnett, who's an MMA fighter, and Mauro Ranello, who does MMA boxing and now wrestling, will serve as English language commentators. And I'm not this because <laughs> it goes on for five pages. Well, basically, what this is is like a compilation of sorts of wrestling matches from New Japan for the past year, I believe. So we're going to see people like Prince Devitt, who is now Finn Balor in NXT. So I'm really um, happy with this, but it's it's strange that Global Force Wrestling has uh-oh. nothing to do with this. Global Force. Sorry, I'm just watching the um, Tatsu breaking his neck, and God damn it, he literally lands on yep, the top right. of his head. Yeah, that right. is uh, that's pretty. For those who want to see it, we will post it on our Facebook page. Sorry, um, my microphone's a bit crap because I'm not looking at it. I'm looking at the computer. Um, if you want to see it, we'll post it on our Facebook page. We'll post a link to it on our Facebook page because um, it's pretty grim. fucking aura. That's all I can put. I mean, that is pretty bad. This New Japan thing is actually pretty decent because. Josh, I yeah, think right. Josh Barnett and Mauro Ranello. I know Mauro Ranello did a lot of the commentary for Strike Force, 
uh, which is an MMA promotion. He did a lot of the commentary mm-hmm. for Pride, I think. Could have got that wrong. I think he did some Pride fights, and he's done a lot of Japan fights. So, and he's a pro wrestling fan as well, so that's always good. Josh Barnett is an MMA fighter who has done pro wrestling, so he probably should be color commentary, I would imagine. So yeah, no Jim Ross. Great. I mean, the way they're booking this, like, already, like, I believe that the first match that they're doing as part of this series will be uh, Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Kazuchika oh, Okada. Sweet baby and they're Jesus. like, they are the two best wrestlers in that promotion. But yeah, Hiroshi Tanahashi, one of the best wrestlers Holy in the world. Holy sweet mother, man, right? God. Can we... And these people are going to be kicking off your fucking series premiere. Oh my God, Can I'm we, so like, hyped. Like, I know that, well, we might as well announce this now, fuck it. The end of year awards are coming up very, very soon. Oh, yes, they are. I'm very excited for it. So basically, what I think we should do, and I'm going to make a fucking prediction now before the show because I'm going to forget. Because I'm stupid and I get drunk and I work now. So all of these things make me forget to do things. So I'm going to predict now that 2015 will be the year of New Japan Pro Wrestling. Definitely. Second biggest company in the world for finally getting American TV exposure. I, j- I can't wrap my head around how awesome this is, because fuck TNA, I right? We've said that get, many a time. I want Ring them to of get Honor, UK coverage, somehow. Yeah, right. Ring of Honor, as good as they are, yeah. like, they are really good, I will say. But New Japan, the amount of athletes, the amount of talent that they have, and the potential for them to just dominate the industry, I... Oh, it's so cool, I'm getting hype over here. It's good. And they're doing actual storylines now, which is not like... Yeah. Fight number one! Fight number two! Fight number three! Fight number four! <laughs> so... Scott, Evil X, fight. <laughs> like, like, I remember watching a fucking Pro Wrestling Noah show, and it had a random table come up in Japanese with X's and zeros. I'm like, what in the fuck is going on? Why the fuck should I care? Like... No, that's a thing, right? New Japan, amazing as it is, if you don't like watching wrestling without commentary or understanding what the hell's going on... But I love the of, Japanese commentators, well, though. Even though you don't know what the fuck they're saying, they care. They yeah. shout, they're like, blah, blah, Japanese words, and then they scream. They just fucking scream, like, this is great. They care about what they watch. This is better than na 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 Michael Cole. I'll take random words I don't know shouting than Mako. Muggle, 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 muggle. I'll take sword of snare, none this car over fucking ah, you fucking da ah, nine ninety nine. <laughs> like at least the commentary team in New Japan <laughs> are I don't know people and fucking emote what <laughs> they're saying. Of two thousand fourteen, we just made a fucking choice for best announcers of twenty fourteen for the year end awards. Japanese, the Japanese commentary New Japan. team. <laughs> To be fair, I think the Spanish announced team has a bigger no. foothold than fucking JBL, Michael Cole, every, and Jerry Lawler, time, right? Right, when I was at uni and we would go to this bar to watch these shows, we had an ongoing joke where, like, when the Spanish announced team pop up at the start of a pay-per-view, we were like, we, we wouldn't mind what they're saying, and we were like, well, our table's definitely going to get broken tonight. Definitely, definitely, definitely our table's going to get broken tonight. We're not going to have a table by the end of the second match. <laughs> like, that was literally <laughs> it. And then when... Wait, they've got like a Pretty. French announced team now, haven't they? Um, I think so. <laughs> we then I started so. doing it with the French. And we had no idea what they were saying. So we just mimed over those. And we're like, our table's not going to get broken. Go over there. Their table always breaks. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't break. Ask Kurt Angle. Brilliant. Liam, what do you think of this whole uh, New Japan thing? Are you excited as we are? The problem is... Oh, he's going to oh, be racist. Oh, no. No, no, it's not oh, racist. God. <laughs> I love, I love my fucking reaction. I didn't go down for that route. I thought, oh, he's just going to lay in the new he's like, oh, now. I don't know who Tanahashi is. Who is the Rainmaker? Well, no, to be fair, I don't know any of those guys. Oh, I don't know who they are. I don't Shelton watch... Benjamin is, or AJ Styles, or Drew Gallows. No, come on, that's different, right? These people have never been in American, like, TV sports. <laughs> I really, look, the thing is, I'm a very busy man. When you work on something like The Avengers, you're very busy. Oh, fuck you. Oh, oh damn me. it. We can't go one show without you bringing so, that up. So, I don't have a lot of time on my hands. I so, I can only dedicate myself to one thing. And really, right now, there's not really going to be anything that 
it is going to stand out to me. That's going to make me want to watch it. Why don't you just try it? Despite the fact that, did you not hear what we were talking about? How hype we were getting sick, of the fucking. If you're sick of WWE, and then... I don't know who they are. Just watch it, you. Well, fucking... that's incentive for you to watch them. That's incentive for you to go watch them it, and see how good they are. You don't have time to do your thing. thing. You so if I went and watched that, again. I wouldn't be able to talk to the Supla fans about Raw. You don't do that. I do that. Okay. Yeah, but you do it on a much more in-depth scale. I kind of just watch it in the background when okay. I'm doing other things. Okay, okay. So, Brilliant. Uh, Brilliant. Uh, okay, there's... Uh, I don't know how... Oh, fuck it. Basically, New Japan, get hype. It's super good. You're finally getting exposure, and I cannot wait to see this in English language, right? Because it's going to be amazing. Yep. And we did mention the end of year yes, awards we for the did. Super we might as well just... Perhaps that we we'll just go straight into this. We've done the news, so get on with it. <laughs> there we go. Let's announce what we're doing here. So, of course, as everyone knows, we do our annual end of year award show, which is kind of actually at the beginning of the next year. But we we look back at the previous year. Uh, that's kind of what the show is. It's usually a a, a, a big celebration or hatred of what's oh, happened. Always hatred. Time. It's always so far. It's always been hatred. Uh, no, you remember when WrestleMania was good? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of what it is. Oh, God. It, it's fun. It's a bit tongue in cheek. For example, once we voted John Laurinaitis as the worst diva of the year. And Dragon Dragon was our best wrestler of the decade. And still is, God rest oh, his soul. Fuck. By the one man vote. Uh, it's only because I annoyed Andy Jesus. to the point where he was like, fine. I, I was just like, you know what? Fuck it. So, Dragon Dragon is the best Brilliant. wrestler of the decade, thanks to Not myself and Andrew Pond. No, of course not. No. What we tend to do is we, we tend to, obviously, the show starts off doing news and then we go into the first hour. It's a two hour extravaganza. The first hour tends to be news, with the second hour being dedicated to fictional awards that we make. Can we take a break halfway through that show? Maybe. Maybe. Um, it's ta- we're on a tape delay, it's fine. <laughs> and uh, the, the, we usually discuss the sort of um, categories we have usually it's best wrestler of the year worst wrestler of the year we have some fun ones like literally worst storyline of the year i know what sam's gonna vote for mm-hmm. um if, if it's not already fucking obvious from my show every monday tuesday fuck when is my show damn it great I messed uh, up continue so we we have some fun ones um uh, but there's one in particular that everyone talks about that actually isn't related to any wrestling it's actually related to the show itself. Oh, yeah. The Co-Host of the Year Award, which oh, I have... Oh, fuck that. We're not doing it anymore. We've agreed. Yeah, we are. No. The reason why... Wait, so, okay, this... that means Andy has confirmed that he is not participating no, no, in this. No, 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 He has no, just no, confirmed that he's no, qualified no, himself. No, 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 We've got uh, we've got much 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 more co-hosts that didn't even make grammatical sense. <laughs> we have we've seven candidates, more, people. We've got many more co-hosts than we we had two years ago. I'm a co-host. We've got, we've got myself, three-time yes, winner, undefeated so far. Oh, we've got off. Andy, oh. we've got Keelan, we've got Carmine, we've got Glenn, we've got Sam, and we've got Ellie. All of whom have participated in many of the shows, including the main Super Show, their own shows. Uh, the the reaction videos from pay-per-views, which, by the way, if you want to go more in-depth about mine, Sam's, and Carmine's opinions on Survivor Series and Sting's quote-unquote debut... You want my opinion? Not your opinion, because you wasn't there. No, go and check it out. It's on YouTube and Supla.com. Brilliant. That's the plug there. Great. Um, you can vote for us, but we're doing it a little different. Um, Sam, would you like to explain the rules of how this one's going to work out this year? Oh, boy. So... Seeing how the end of year awards, co host of the year award, has always been marred with controversy, walkouts, <laughs> dickheads, and just general <laughs> upset, we've decided to take a different approach this year where Liam cannot make himself co host of the year. Although I'm still keeping the Liam Dunn co host of the year award going. Yeah, I'm sure you are. But just because he can't fuck us all over doesn't mean he's not eligible. All of us are eligible, and the way you can do that is by voting for your favorite co-host via social network. You can vote on Facebook, you can vote on the YouTubes, you can also vote on the Twitters and the Tumblers. And 
for the first time in history, you can vote on www.supla.com. What was those websites again, Sam? Facebook. YouTube.com forward slash The Supla Podcast. Twitter at The Supla. The Supla.tumblr.com and www.supla.com. But Sam, Sam, what, what, do the, what do the listeners get for, for doing all this? Well, seeing how I mentioned we're in a world of instant gratification, the winner... No. What will happen is... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Shit, because the gratification and then you win the winner. What, why are you going with this? I don't fucking know. If you vote, you get put into a draw for a free shirt of your choice. So remember, if you want a higher chance of winning this free t-shirt, which we have yet to, d- to determine what the t-shirt is, but once we know, we will let everybody else know. Indeed. But to get a higher chance of winning this, you have to use all five platforms of social media. You have to vote on Facebook, on Twitter, on YouTube, on Supla.com, on whatever the fifth one was, which I've kind Tumblr. of forgotten. Sam's going to tell me now. Tumblr. Tumblr. You have to use all five of them. If you use them, any every time you use a social media, you get your name put into a hat. So if you just use Facebook, your name is in there once. Yep. If you use Facebook and Supla.com, your name's in there twice. If you use Facebook, Supla.com and YouTube, you're in there three times. You see where I'm going with this? Indeed. We understand numbers, Liam. <laughs> but Knowing you, can is only about. Use, you can only vote on each media, uh, social media platform once. Once on every platform. So of a maximum amount of votes that you'll get at the end of this is five. And please do not be the dick where you vote five times for one person. Actually, no, do if it's for me. Do yeah, it's no, for me. Basically, you can vote for whoever you'd like. You can vote twice for Andy, twice for me, once for Liam. You can vote five times for Ellie. No matter what, you can do it. As long as it's five times, once on every social media we have. So if you vote five times, you've got five times the chance of winning this unknown t-shirt that we have. It's a mystery time. prize, time. just like TNA. It's the five time. 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 But anyway, right? And in the end... In our fave five. <laughs> in the end of this, we will come out with a legitimate co-host of the year. For and the first won't... time ever. For the first time ever, despite the fact that half the time it was because Andy was a dipshit and didn't know what side of a lighter he picked. But oh, at the same I time... I haven't that yet! <laughs> Brilliant. I haven't that yet! Don't get yourself disqualified again. <laughs> Uh, but basically, point being, point being is, this year we're doing things legit and clean, and the best part... You could win a prize! Not that. Best part is, it won't be marred in controversy, because a certain someone might not be here for the award show. <laughs> hey! And to explain what's happening, I am not going to be on the end of year awards show this year for the very first time. Hallelujah! Can... Hallelujah! Oh, look, <laughs> fucking Hallelujah, right? Oh, it's <laughs> got like a fuck. Like, the authority away. is out of power, and Liam Dunn won't be at the end of year awards. Yes! I won't be, yes! I be, um, I won't be joining you for the end of year awards, sadly. That is because I will be in America. No! My sister has just given birth to my very first nephew. Yay! So I will be going over to America for the new year, and thus I will have to miss the end of year awards. But I will be here for the next major episode of the Super, which is everyone, what is it? Christmas! The Christmas edition. So join us where we go back to the Supla Shack in the North Pole. Ready to Why hang out with Santa. It's every year. It's so hokey and shit. Oh, it's my first time going. I'm well excited for this. Oh, exactly. Everyone's okay. excited. I got my passport ready. I got my thermals. I'm all set for this radio show that we're doing in the North Pole, apparently. We're not going in the North Pole. Oh, the cynical Grinch has come out again. Cynical <laughs> Grinch is back, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, no! <laughs> So, we've outlined pretty much all of what we can do for the Co-host of the Year Awards. Look out for the YouTube channel where we will upload campaign videos for a host to make a statement as to why he or she should be voted as Co-host of the Year 2014. And don't forget to join us for my personal all-time favourite episode every year that we do, which is the Christmas episode. I get so happy and jolly and excited because 
It's Christmas. It's Christmas, everybody. Get hyped. What about Kwanzaa? Shut up about Kwanzaa. And we will okay. see you on the Christmas edition of the Supla 2014. Oh my god. See you then, everybody. Hello. No, it's goodbye, dickhead. Oh, and I have been Andy Quad. I've been Sam Brooks. We've kind of done the goodbyes, but thanks, Andy. Don't sing the thing! Supla.com. <laughs> Supla.com. What? 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 Where did you come from? <laughs> <laughs> Where's he been? Is he been in the I don't know, he's from out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs>